Rosh Chodesh Teves always falls out in the days of Hanukkah. We know that Rosh Chodesh, the head of the month, means it includes the whole month. That means there must be a connection between the general theme of the whole month of Teves with Hanukkah. In addition to this, the Rebbe wants to explain the connection of the two special days, Asara B'Teves and Chavdal B'Teves, the Hilul of the Alter Rebbe, also with the general theme of the month of Teves. So we have a Pasuk in Megillus Esther, that Esther is taken to King Ahasuerus by Chodesh Asiri in the 10th month, as the Pasuk says, Hu Chodesh Teves, this was the month of Teves. Says the Gemara, what was unique about Chodesh Teves? That Esther is taken to Ahasuerus, and Ahasuerus should have a special appreciation for Esther, is because this is a month that Haguf Nehenem in Haguf. As Rashi explains that the month of Tevis is a time when it's very cold outside. And therefore there's a special pleasure that one body derives from the other body. From the body heat. Now we know that everything Begashmias comes from its source Beruchnias. So first the Rebbe is going to look at the general idea of winter and summer. Spiritually what this represents. As well as the idea of Haguf Nehenem in Haguf. So, we know that the month of Teves, when it's cold outside, the sun isn't shining as brightly and as intensely. This represents that Beruchni Yisrael the Darga, called Shemesh Havaya, the Shemesh, the sun, which Havaya is, it's a, it's a marshal for, for Shem Havaya, is also not shining as intensely, as strongly. As opposed to the uh, summer, when the sun is shining much stronger, that's a sign that there's also a greater strength within the Gilea Likus and the levels of Kedusha that are available and therefore it's easier to serve Hashem to reach levels of Avoidus Hashem spirituality during the summer months. Says the Rebbe, but it's specifically because of this itself that there's a certain advantage in the winter months and particularly in the month of Teves compared to other months. Because in a certain sense it's going to be dealing with a time when Elikus is not so revealed. And the Rebbe says, this is then going to be the pshat, that it's the month that haguf, nen, and min haguf, that the body is deriving pleasure from the body. Spiritually, what this represents is, we know that husband and wife is also a marshal for Hashem and Knesset Yisrael. So the avoid of the Yidin in the month of Tevis, that means in a time when it's very cold outside, in a time when there's no gili elikus, this causes a special pleasure, so to speak, of ayochel to Hashem. Now the expression used is haguf nehenem in haguf. The body derives pleasure from the body. So the Rebbe is going to also look now in the Sikha on this particular expression. Why the expression guf when we're referring to the Yid? Why the guf specifically? And also why when we speak about Hashem, we're specifically speaking about this level that's going to be called guf. Well, first of all, as far as the Yid is concerned, what we're saying is that the pleasure that Hashem is deriving is specifically from the body of the Yid. That is... That just as we said, that in the world generally, this is the time that godliness is not shining as strong during the winter months, as much as in the summer months. What this also means inside the person's own avoida is that during the summer months, it's a time where the neshama, just like Hashem is shining more intensely, it's a time that the neshama is shining more intensely. And at the most, you just need to remove the blockages of the body. Whereas the time of winter where godliness is not shining so strongly in the world. And what that means is also in the person's own avoider, the neshama is not shining so strongly, then the avoider right now is it's not so much about removing the blockages of the body and having the neshama shine as much as it's about revealing the, the mila, the qualities, the special idea of what the goof itself is. In other words, it's more about serving Hashem, not so much because of the revelations of the neshama as much as really transforming the body itself, showing that the body itself is connected to Elikos. The Rebbe explains this further by bringing a story that the Friedrich Rebbe told in the name of the Tzemach Tzedek about the Baal Shem Tov. We know that the Baal Shem Tov loved light, brightness. So it was one time on a wintry night where there wasn't enough candles available to illuminate the shul. The Baal Shem Tov said to take what he called the ice lichtelach, literally the ice candles, but it's referred to the icicles that were hanging from the roof, and to light them, and in that way to illuminate the shul. The Talmidim did exactly that. And the ice candles, these icicles burnt. The Tzemach Tzedek said that by the Chassidim, by the Talmidim, by the Baal Shem Tov. So even the ice was burning. 
In other words, the Baal Shem Tov came along and showed how you could take ice, something that's exactly the opposite, the complete opposite of light, of warmth, and that itself to transform into heat, into light. And not that the ice should no longer be ice, but rather making that the ice itself is now shining. Says the Rebbe the same thing over here. The Avoida that we're talking about, this winter Avoida, this Tevis Avoida, is not about taking, removing the body and allowing the Neshama to shine, but rather showing the greatness of the body itself, serving Hashem with the body itself, transforming the body itself. How do we really go about this? Or rather, how is it even possible to take this seemingly coarse body and to come along and to show that the body itself is holy and not only because the neshama can now shine, says the Rebbe, because in truth the body in a certain sense has a greater connection to Atzmus, to the very essence of Hashem. That is the connection of the neshama to Hashem. As Chassidus puts it, is what we call, is what we call giluyim. It's because of revelations. In other words, it's only about when godliness is shining. Whereas in the guf, here we have something called Bechiras Ha'atzmus, Hashem himself chose the physical body of the Yid. It's not about Giluyim. It's not about how great it is or how great it could be and so on and so forth. Hashem chose the physicality, this physical guf. And therefore, what we're doing with the guf itself is revealing the greatness of the body, its special connection to Hashem. And when is this revealed? It's not, it's specifically, not when the Neshama is shining. It's specifically when there are these concealments, when seemingly it's a dark and cold time outside. And that's when it's revealed that really there's something greater about the body that it itself is connected to the very, very essence of Hashem. Says the Rebbe, this is then the deeper pshat of ha-guf, ne'enem in ha-guf. When we speak about the word guf, guf also means the essence of something, the very core of something. So when we say guf, it's referring to the essence of Hashem. And what does he have Anoah from? What's he deriving pleasure from? Not so much from just removing the concealments of the body so that the neshama should be able to shine. But again, Hashem has a specific Anoah, specifically from the guf itself when we take the guf and transform it into Kedusha. And when is this happening again? It's a time when it's cold outside. In other words, specifically, aguf nanam and aguf, just like physically we say, that the body is deriving pleasure when it's cold outside. Similarly, beruchni yisoyin it's when it's cold. In other words, when there isn't a gilu yoyr haneshama. So now the guf kvayochel Hashem himself is deriving pleasure from the body, from the physicality of the yid, from the physical body being transformed into, into Kedusha. Says the Rebbe, now we can understand the connection to Hanukkah as well. What's Hanukkah all about? Hanukkah is about taking those Hanukkah candles and we put them outside in a dark time, in a place of a Rishus Harabim, in a place that's seemingly disconnected from Kedusha. But the idea is that we're making now that the darkness itself should shine. And again, this is similar to the idea of Haguf Nen. I mean, Haguf it specifically because there's a special Koyach of Atzmus, of the very essence of Hashem, that we have that ability to take even something as dark and as low as this outside world and transform it into Kedusha. Really, says the Rebbe, this is the general difference also between Golos and time of the Beis HaMikdash. In the time of the Beis HaMikdash, a time of godly revelation with all the miracles happening in the Beis HaMikdash, as opposed to the time of Golos, which is a time of concealment. And really, that's what Hanuk- that's really the advantage of Hanukkah, even over the candles of the Beis HaMikdash. The candles of the Beis HaMikdash are able to shine in a time that's bright and shiny and, and when godliness is revealed. Whereas the whole idea of Hanukkah is that it shines even in a time, or specifically in a time rather, where it's dark, transforming that darkness into light. Says the Rebbe, now we can also understand the connection to the two days of Asara Betevis and Chavdal Letevis. Asara Betevis is the day when the Churban started. It's the day when they placed a siege on Yerushalayim, which led to all the other in Yonim of Golos. This idea that we're speaking about a time of darkness. But what do we do on this day? We fast on this day, representing the idea of Tshuva, what we're trying, what we're causing is that this day itself, this darkness itself, should be transformed into a time of Sosin and Simcha. Says the Rebbe, Chavdal Teves, the Yom Hilul of the Al Rebbe, the day that all of the Avoid of the Al Rebbe comes to its culmination and shines brightly in this world. What's the, what's the significance of Chavdal Teves? The Al Rebbe, who introduced Chsidus Chabad, caused and made that we should be able to take the Inyanim of Emuna, of pure faith, the Inyanim that are completely beyond Seichel, and bring them into our seichel, into our cold logic. 
So the idea of coldness that we were speaking about before in our own faculties, that's the idea of our mind, our cold mind and our logic. And what did the Alter Rebbe do? The Alter Rebbe now warmed this Seichel itself, that it too should be able to be permeated with Helikos. Famous expression that says that when we take our Seichel and that it should be able to understand Helikos, this is the true idea of Tchies HaMesim. So the Alter Rebbe took the coldness of the world like we said before, and made that it should be haguf nene, that it should be the real the delight and pleasure of Hashem, which is the Hanoi and Chamimus of Kedusha, specifically coming from our simple minds, becoming warmed up through Chesidus.